Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, we're going to keep building our Flappy Bird game. Now in our last video, we showed you how to create a little bit of the player movement for our game. And this involved adding a rigid body so that we could have gravity pull our bird down. And when we click the left mouse button or click, tap the screen, it pushes our bird up or flaps our bird or adds force in the positive Y direction. In this video, we're going to be adding death zones for our bird to trigger a game over scene. And so this is going to involve the foreground being a collider and a death zone above the camera view being a trigger. And so we're going to cover both on trigger enter and on collision enter. So let's go ahead and get started by adding those colliders and triggers into our scene. So I'm going to create a 2D object sprite and then I'm going to rename it Death Zone Ground. And let's go ahead and add the foreground sprite to this sprite object. So I'm going to go to our sprite sheet, make sure it's extended, and then scroll down to our foreground and drag it into the sprite renderer. Now it's appearing behind both our background and our bird image. And so to fix this, we want to change the order layer or order in layer to one. And I want our player to be on the same layer as our foreground because I never want our player to go behind our foreground. So I'm going to make sure that it's set to one and I actually already did that. But you can make sure that if it's set to zero, just change it to one. And let's go back and make sure that our foreground is scaled and positioned down at the bottom of our screen. So I'll go ahead and do that. So that's pretty good. Now you want to make sure that your sprite is bigger than any aspect ratio that you'll have. Uh, and so you want to make sure that if you changed it to 4.3 or 3.4, that your sprite image ex still extends beyond the camera view. And so I'm going to actually switch it back to 10.16. Now that we have that position, let's go ahead and add the box collider to this object. So add component physics 2D box collider. Now this is already scaled to the size of our sprite and scale of our object. So now what we need to do is create tag for this object. So I'm going to go to tag or untag drop down menu and then add tag and there's going to be a plus sign that you need to click right there and then let's go ahead and rename this to I'm just going to call it death zone now let's go back to our object and make sure that we assign this tag and then let's create one more object and it's going to be a empty object and we want to make sure that it's centered in the X and you want to position it above the camera view in the Y direction. So probably right about there. And then let's go ahead and rename it to Death Zone Sky. And let's add a Physics 2D box collider. And because it doesn't have a sprite image, it's not going to scale to the sprite size. And so we need to change the size of the box collider ourselves. So I'm going to scale it so that it reaches the full width of the X direction of our camera. And I'm going to position it a little higher. I'll probably leave it right about there. Actually, I'll just leave it there. Now for this object, we want to make sure that it's a trigger. So the ground is going to be a collider and the box in the sky or the death zone in the sky is going to be a trigger. 
this means that our bird is going to be able to land and interact with the ground, but it will actually be able to fly through the skybox or the death zone in the sky. Now, the green lines designate the collider zone or the trigger zone, and this white box designates the camera view. And so you can have both of these flush or touching um, the bottom of the collider and the top of the box. This would mean that as soon as any part of the collider of the bird touches or touches the top of the camera or touches the bottom of the collider or trigger zone, that it would trigger the game over. And so I've positioned it a little bit higher than the camera and left a little gap between them so that the bird can actually go a little bit off the camera, but it's not until the entire bird goes off the camera that it would actually hit the collider. And so I just wanted it to be a little bit easier for the players that would play this game. But you can do either, either way. Now the last thing that we're going to want to do before we go and code the on trigger and on collision enter functions is add our death zone tag to our sky death zone. Now that we've done that, let's go on to our player controller script. So I'm going to find it and open it in Visual Studios. Once we have it opened in Visual Studios, let's go ahead and type out these two functions. So the first one is void on trigger enter and so this is going to be the one for the death zone in the sky and the parameter for this is a collider 2d you want to make sure that you remember 2d and it's actually not on trigger enter it's on trigger enter 2d these are really important features to remember because on trigger enter and collider without the 2D are for 3D colliders. For the parameter name, I'm just going to call it other and then let's open this function and let's go ahead and type the other function name. So void on collision enter 2D and then the parameter is a collision, not a collider and it's collision 2D and I'm also going to call it other. Then let's open that. Now the scripts that are going to go inside these two functions are going to be essentially the same. We're going to detect if the other object we collide with has a tag equal to death zone. But there's a, a slight syntactical difference because the parameters have different types. One's a collider and one's a collision. And so before we do that, let's add some variables that we're going to need in these functions. So the first one is going to be a boolean. So public bool, oops, bool, and I'm going to call it is go. And the go is going to stand for game over. And the second one, let's call public bool is start. Now I'm going to add a comment to make sure that I remember that go equals game over. Game over. And let's go ahead and add a comment to our RB to make sure that we remember that it is a rigid body. People should be able to understand that one because of the data type, but just in case. Alright, so now that we have that straightened out, we want to create an if statement for our on trigger enter and on collision enter. So let's type if, and we want to detect if the other dot tag is equal to quotes death zone. And if it is, we want to set the is game over. So is go equal to true. So if it's false, that means we're still playing. If it's true, that means we've died. 
let's go ahead and copy this if statement and paste it right into the on collision enter 2d now the syntactical difference that i was talking about before is that instead of going other.tag, we need to say other.transform.tag. And the reason why is in order to get to the tag component or tag element of the object, we need to first call the transform because this data type is a collider. And so to get to the tag, we call the transform, and then we can call the tag. These are just slight syntactical differences between these two data types. The last thing that we're going to want to do before we test this code is we want to set the isStart variable to true on the condition that the player touches the screen for the first time. And so to do this, inside our if statement that reads if input.getButton down fire1, we want to check to see if is if start equals false. So we say if is start equals false. Another way to write this is rather than equals false to say exclamation point is start. So that exclamation point is another way of flipping the value. And so if is start is equal to true then this would be false, this statement would be false. But if it's false, we're then flipping that to true, which means the if statement would execute. And so let's go and add curly braces to our if statement, and then set is start equal to true. This is gonna come in handy a little later on, but let's go ahead and test this script. So I'm gonna save it, Go back to Unity, and let's select our player. And you can see now that in our player controller, in the inspector, we have two new booleans, the isGo and isStart. Now, when I hit play, on the first click, isStart is going to become true, isGo is going to remain false, but as soon as I collide with the ground or pass through the trigger in the sky, we're going to see that set equal to true. So let's go ahead and test that. So I start clicking, we're playing, and if I let go and collide with the ground, is go or is game over has now become true. Let's see if it works for the on trigger enter. So let's play, I'm clicking, and if I click too much and I go off camera, it's now become true. Now let's go back to the code and add a couple features that are going to make this gameplay a little more smooth. So the first thing that we want to do is that before we start the game, we want our bird to stay stationary. We don't want it to fall to the ground. And so based on the isStart uh, if condition, we want to set the gravity scale to 1 in this instance. But before that, it's going to equal false, and we're going to set that in the inspector. So after we set is start equal to true, we want to call the rigid body, and then say dot gravity scale, and set it equal to one. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that players can't continue to click the screen and keep the bird up in the air if the bird is dead. So to do this, let's go to our if input dot get button down fire one function and let's add another condition based on the is go boolean so we're going to and these two conditions together so in order for this if statement to execute both conditions need to be true and we're going to check to see if is game over or is go is equal to false so i can type is go equal to false or rather than equals false I can just add an exclamation point in the beginning so if it's false it's going to flip that to true and if we click at the same time then this if statement's going to execute and if it's the first time it executes we're going to set is start equal to true 
and we're going to set the gravity scale to one and then we're going to flap after that and so if we run into the ground then is go is going to equal true and that's going to get flipped to equal false and this if statement will won't execute anymore so let's go ahead and save and now let's let's test this and see if it works but before we do that we have to set the gravity scale to zero. So as we select our player and go to the rigid body, let's change the gravity scale to zero. Now we're ready to test it. So I hit play, okay, and we have a compiling error. I forgot an exclamation point. That's okay. And, huh, that's weird. I thought I put equals one. Maybe I hit undo or something or deleted it by accident. Okay. And no more compiling errors. So let's go ahead and hit play. And you can see that our bird is stationary, which is what we want because we haven't started the game until we click the screen. Once we click the screen, we add force. Is start is now true. And if we stop clicking and collide with the ground, it's false and we can't click the screen anymore to continue flying so our game is dead or our bird is dead and so right now we could trigger a button to appear and when you click it we could reload the scene and we'll we'll do that next video probably actually yes we'll see but let's see if it works for colliding with the or passing through the trigger in the sky. So it's not playing. I click, it starts playing, and we go through the trigger and we can't click anymore to save the bird because we went off the screen. So that concludes everything that we want to cover in this video. If we went too fast or if there's anything confusing, you can always rewatch it or slow the video down or pause it until you get caught up. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. Make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends and we'll see you next time.